Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video I'm going to show you how you can get started improvising over a 2-5-1 progression just using the basic scale of that 2-5-1 and the diatonic arpeggios that are found in that scale. I'm going to show you a 2-5-1 in the key of C major, a scale position that would work with this 2-5-1 and also the diatonic arpeggios that are found in this position. And then from that I'm going to give you some examples of how you can use that material to create lines and take it a little bit further and use the basic arpeggios and also give you some other ideas for other arpeggios that you can use when you're improvising over the course. And finally I'm going to add the diatonic triads as well because it's nice to just have a lot of different options to improvise over this really important progression. This is the basic way that I use when I'm improvising. So for a chord that I'm playing a solo over, I'll have seven or eight different arpeggios that I can use. So there are a lot of options available and they're all found within that scale that I'm using over the chord. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The basic scale position that I'm going to use in this video is this eighth position scale position for C major. So. And if we want to try to place this 2-5-1 progression in the context of this scale and in the key of C, then let's just first look at the notes of a C major scale, so that would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And for each of those notes, we can construct a chord. So we have the diatonic chord of C major, that would be. Now for each of these, we can assign a Roman numeral. That's a little bit how you think about the key. So you will have the one chord, which is C major seven, two chord, is D minor, 3 is E minor, 4 is F, 5 is G7, 6 is A minor 7, B half diminished is 7, and then again back to 1. And if we look at it like this, then we have a 2 5 1 that's. When you're soloing over this progression, then the whole progression is actually just in one key. And you could, of course, just use the scale and play your solo like that. But what you want to do in jazz is that you want to play lines where each of the melodies that you're playing on the chord will fit to that specific chord and for the next chord you want to sound it like that chord and that way you're following the changes even though the scale stays the same. The way you do that is that you start emphasizing important notes from the chord uh, on, in your melody lines and really make sure to put them on especially the heavy beats like one and three. And the easiest way to do that is just by using the arpeggios. You don't have to only use the arpeggios. I have another video where I'm talking about how to improvise only using arpeggios and chord tones which is something that's really useful and something that you want to check out. But at the same time, you don't only want to play solo lines that are consisting only of arpeggios. You want to mix it up with arpeggios and scales. And sometimes you'll play a melody that's maybe mostly arpeggio notes, but there are going to be scale notes in there as well. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. The way to look at this is to first look at all the arpeggios of the chords that we just covered and then have the, those available when we're improvising. So if we take all the diatonic chords and turn them into arpeggios for C major in this position, then we get this exercise. For each note we have C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7. We have all the arpeggios for all the chords that are found within the scale and we can use that when we're improvising. So if you're playing over a 2 5 one you want to use the D minor on the 2 and then the G7 arpeggio on the, on the 5 and maybe the C major 7 up here. And you can turn that into an exercise. So maybe the first place you want to start, um, if you want to work on this, is to play that exercise of just all the diatonic arpeggios and then maybe just try and play the arpeggios through the progression. That could be something like this. Now that we have an idea about where each of the arpeggios are for each of the chords in the progression, then we can start constructing some lines. And I would say in the beginning, maybe, I mean, you can of course start improvising in time right away, but you can also just try and sit down and experiment with writing some lines and in that way build a vocabulary. I think that's an easier way to get to work with it because in the beginning you kind of need to come up with something 
and then maybe try and play it and hear how it sounds and see if you think it sounds good and otherwise you need to change it and if you're just all the time trying to hit the right arpeggio while you're playing in time you're going to be worried more about hitting the right notes than actually playing melodies that make any sense. So writing lines is something that's really useful for this. So an example of a line using the arpeggios through the 251 could be something like this. So here I'm really just using the D minor 7 arpeggio going back and starting on the 3rd, so the F here, and just playing the rest of the arpeggio. And also for the G7. All coming out of this basic G7 arpeggio, resolving to C major. Also just really the basic arpeggio. Of course you can also start mixing it with the notes from the scale, and then you get something like this. So here, I'm still playing stuff that's really based on and really emphasizing arpeggio notes, because the first part, all arpeggio notes here, and then scale note, scale note, arpeggio again, and then on the G7, arpeggio note, arpeggio note, the root, scale note, arpeggio, arpeggio, and also an arpeggio, and then a scale note, and then resolving to only arpeggio notes on the C major. So the first thing you want to do is probably to get this part of it into your playing, so really just sit down and try and work with making lines, mixing the basic arpeggio, so the arpeggios of the chords themselves, with scale note material and just come up with some different melodies, change it up, skip around in the arpeggio and in that way create some beautiful lines and work on that because this is the basic part of playing over the changes and if you start analyzing solos then this is what you'll find people are doing most of the time. So of course you can also go a little bit further than this uh, and this is again still something that's really really common and really useful to have in your system and that is if we're using D minor 7 uh, the arpeggio on a D minor chord, we can also start on the second note in the chord, which in this case is the, uh, the third, the F, and we can play an entire arpeggio here. So that's an F major 7 arpeggio. And really, what we are playing is mostly just the same notes that we were playing here, except we get this note on top, which is an E, but that's a 9, and that works just fine on a D minor. And if we repeat that process on the G7, so then we start on the second note, so that's a B, and then we get a B diminished, or B, uh, sorry, B half diminished arpeggio. And again, we just get a 9 in there, it sounds okay in this, in this context. And for the C, start on the second note, that's the E, so the third of uh, C is E. E minor 7, and again we just have a C major 7 with a 9, which works just fine also in this place in the context. And an example of a line using this could sound like this. So here I'm really just using this way of playing the F major 7 arpeggio and then kind of running down the, the D minor 7 arpeggio here, moving into the G7, which is the B half diminished, and then down the scale and then Essentially, it's the same melody as on the D minor. So that's just down the G7 arpeggio, resolving to the third of C major 7. And here I'm really just using the C major 7 arpeggio. Another example where I'm combining both of the arpeggios that I now have available could sound like this. So here first I'm starting with some scale melody on the D minor, then a descending F major 7 arpeggio, and then we get the G7, that's first a G7 arpeggio, and then a B half to major arpeggio, and then resolving to the 5th of C major 7. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that 
there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these videos on jazz guitar and music theory. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page and if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. This whole process where we're using 7th chord diatonic arpeggios is something that you can then repeat also just using the diatonic triads. So instead of playing four note arpeggios to the scale just as a basic exercise, you can also use, to use the triads or the three note arpeggios. That would be like this. And if we look at the notes of a D minor seven arpeggio, then we have D, F, and A and C. So that already gives us a D minor triad and an F major triad. And actually we could start on the A as well, and then we would have an A minor triad. And that's just similar to what I was doing with the F major seven arpeggio in the previous example. So now we have three different triads that we can use. D minor, F, and A minor. We do the same for G7, then we get G, B diminished, and then D minor. And for C would be the C, the E minor, and the G major triad. So we have a lot of different triads that we can use when we're improvising. And these are just other ways of creating melodies. I think the way I'm thinking about these triads is if you have three notes instead of four, you can create other inversions and you can create other melodies. And it's not so, so much about which notes we're playing, it's really about the melody that you can create with this note set that's gonna make it useful when you're improvising. An example of a line using the triads would sound like this. So the first part is really just a scale one. Then we get an A minor triad on the D minor. Moving up to the third of the G7, and then we get two triads first, a D minor, and then a B diminished, and then that's resolving to this melody, which is an E minor triad on the C major. If you want to check out another video where I'm talking about this approach of using triads over a well-known progression, then check out this video where I'm discussing how to use different triads over a G7 and then applying this to a blues in G. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. And if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.